Hello, everybody. I believe we are live. Welcome to Popcorn Planet Live here on Phantom Wire Live. We're going to figure out a name. <laughs> uh, but I got my main man, Lewis, and we're here. Uh, we're a little early because I'm going to go see The Hunt this afternoon. Oh, I'm you. We're early. I got to get out by two so I can go head over to see The Hunt uh, and uh, be sure to review that later. Uh, but you guys are watching here on either Facebook or YouTube. Uh, I'm Andy Signar over on Popcorn Planet. I do a dual stream here uh, over on Phantom Wire Live on Facebook as well. Phantom Wire News. If you aren't following there to get all your news, go follow. We keep you up to date uh, every hour on the hour. And when news breaks, we're there filling you with the, the coolest stuff. So please go give a like over to Phantom Wire if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're watching on Facebook, you can come on over to, uh, and chat and join us over on uh, YouTube with lots of content there as well. Uh, but I'm here with Nerd Look. Uh, what's up, Lewis? Lewis? What's up, man? Andy, Lewis. thanks for having me here again. Thanks yeah. for having me here again, man. It's, it's it's a blast as always. I want to give, you know, before I start this, I want to give a shout out to a super fan. We have a new super fan. She's been talking about the show uh, with me back and forth. Jenny Magar, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing her. Jenny, uh, yeah. Friends, right? You know Jenny, right? Of course. She's I like, like a, Jenny's watching. Yeah, thank you, Jenny Magar and the Mad yeah, Monster yeah. crew. Yeah, What's yeah, up? Yeah, we got to get the Mad Monster, uh, Mr. Mad Monster on here. It's like I've tried four times. Uh, anyway, uh, well, yes, hello, Jenny. Needs to be 13 times. Uh, but yeah, always good to <laughs> talk here with Lewis. Um, <clears throat> Jenny should call in, dude. Jenny, come on, call in. She'd be, she'd be, she got, she's got opinions. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about this main opinion today, right? So this was the news that dropped. So it finally gave me an excuse to do this story, which I've been wanting to do. So Bob Iger's next job is fixing Disney Plus. Uh, former Disney Bob Iger's new roles, executive chairman will have him focusing directly on the company's streaming service, Disney plus more specifically, Iger's job is to right the ship that has been drifting somewhat off course since its massive debut last summer, as reported by Hollywood Reporter, it's jumped up of 28 million subscribers in its first three months. Thanks to the Mandalorian season two is coming out in October. However, outside that launch and every episode of the Simpsons, which is the only thing I watch religiously with my kids on, on Disney plus. They love it. I love going back, but you gotta, you gotta, I, that, the one warning with parents, I forgot it. It's got some really mature jokes <laughs> there. Like Quimby's in the porn theater and stuff. I'm just like, Ey! uh, but yeah, I, I, luckily it's, it's, it's fun to, to, to if the first several seasons, uh, services uh, has, uh, has little to offer older viewers four months into existence. There's been serious lack of new content to keep subscribers going. And we still have five months away until the Falcon and winter soldier. Yes. Good point. Is anyone still talking about Togo or Noel? Man, Noel was rough. Uh, look, they got some stuff in, in development. According to Iger, he'll be tasked with repairing the service's somewhat chaotic behind-the-scenes development environment to help Disney Plus reach its goals of 60 to 90 million subscribers and 50 original series and 10 films and specials each year by 2024. Uh, they had a major advantage when they launched, but now they need to figure it out because Quibi, HBO Max, Peacock, there's a lot of stuff coming into town. So I thought this was a great opportunity to finally go through, how do we fix this, Lewis? Let's talk. I got a few ideas already in, and I see some piling in. I see some are similar. I think we're a lot of us are on the same page, but let's get to it. I have two massive ones. Two massive ones. I'm, I want to get them out right away, and let's talk about it, and then you feel free to throw in more. First up, first up in fixing Disney+. Plus. They got to figure out a way to put more mature content on it. I understand Disney is a family brand. I understand it. But still, Avatar is a little bit more teen focused. Some Avenger stuff gets a little like they got on. They're already going there a little bit. There's a way to age gate the app and not have it be R rated or pornos. Like there's a way to do it where it still can be slightly more mature for, you know, older teens and still fit the Disney brand. They got to adapt there because otherwise this is becoming a babysitter app and they're not going to be able to grow. Just having Hulu as sort of their, their dumping ground for mature content to me is, is a, is a, is a mistake that they're doing. I, I think as a parent with kids, I like age gating on Netflix. I like that I have the choice. They can log in and see kids stuff. They can, but the problem with Netflix is there is like hardcore stuff on there. Like if you go off the beaten path, you can find some really, really extreme stuff in there that I like, I was like, damn. Um, uh, but my point is, of course, that would never be on Disney Plus, but you could still put some stuff that's a little bit more mature. Uh, so that's step one. And then step two, they got to make some original content enough rebooting the IP. I understand why they're rebooting IP. I understand why we're, we're going to the catalog. We're bringing everything out. It, look, that makes sense. I get it. You got to reboot all the things you like and people are expecting. Those are big glossy things to get people ingrained, ingrained. But you know, the Mandalorian in a way is the most original thing they've done. And it's the best thing they've done. It's an original thing in sort of a step of what they own. But I'm talking even more original. Like, let's get talented filmmakers 
give them a ton of money and do what Netflix is doing, but do it with the Disney stamp and like let you gotta let let loose and let them go. Netflix isn't like over controlling everything. They're getting content. They're filling it up. It's going. It's going. It's going. Like how we need a Stranger Things on Disney Plus, like something that's new and we're gonna talk about. It new IP that Disney can own that we're going to get excited about. How about new animated shows and movies where Dis- it's like Disney's is they don't even like do new animated shows, which is like beyond me. How, where is the Disney original animated content that should have already been in development and ready on there. And whether it's CGI Pixar, or go back to some hand drawn stuff. There's so many talented creatives out in the world that Disney could invest in. And they're not the one thing I really like that they do. I don't know if you've watched this Lewis are the, uh, the spark shorts, like the Pixar shorts that they do. They're sort of releasing, more Pixar shorts to give more opportunity to filmmakers to do new stories. And I love watching those little ones with my kids. I've, I've gone through all of them and it's always fun when new ones come in, but why not? Why aren't they figuring out a way to fast track a half hour, you know, best of Pixar shorts every week? I, I, I don't get it. They got students working there. There's ways to sort of spit out more original content and then have us vote on which one do you want to become a feature? You know, like, there's so many opportunities to get original ideas and, and to test it on this platform. And they're not. It's all reboots of everything. Everything's a reboot from the Fox catalog, from Dis- Lindy Lady and the Tramp to which thing haven't we tapped yet? Oh, cool. Let's Home Alone. Sure. Let's do that one. Uh, Cheaper by the Dozen. Mm-hmm. That's in our catalog. Great. Let's do that one there's no originality so uh, the mature things the originality are two massive things that need to be fixed for this platform i think to really have legs otherwise like i've said i really think it's a glorified babysitter it's a kid app that i think even the kids are going to get bored of uh because it's stuff it's like it's their parents stuff there's not like something that they feel like can be theirs. You know what I mean? It's all, it's like a retro app where like Netflix has, you know, uh, what's that? Uh, my, my stepdaughter watches uh, 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 Miraculous is like the new thing that their kids are like, talk. like there's, there's new things there that the kids get into. And, and I don't see any of Disney owning any of that because they're so nervous, right? They're being so <laughs> safe. Uh, but those are my, I have a few more thoughts, but Lewis, I'm going to turn over to you. Thoughts on those two or what, what else would you want to add? Dude, I have a few, I have like, uh, one of them actually was your your idea. It's get rid of the rated G image. It's all image. No matter what they do, people are going to say it's rated G. They're not going to take risk and stuff like that. I think that's very important to make the audience think that they uh, that they will take it to the next step and get into a more mature kind of maybe even more scary uh, topic. I-, I love the old school cartoons are showing. I think Togo is one of the the year's best films if you guys haven't seen that so i don't think that movie gets enough credit but among some of the stuff i wrote down here real quick <clears throat> is constantly why don't you constantly or they constantly remind us that great stuff is coming soon they need to constantly be reminding the audience because when i think disney plus i don't even know what what the hell why should i be turning on the app or what should i be looking forward to next maybe up the promotion uh number two for me <clears throat> this is gonna sound funny but i think it's gonna work introduce like a daily show right a five minute show hire andy jody and lewis uh to to host it and talk about the shows and interact with the audience hey you know togo just came out we're working disney plus is introducing this and hype it up kind of like starwars.com does that that show with uh andy uh, i forgot her name uh, the, the Andy Gutierrez uh, and and her co-host. That's fun. It, it keeps the the fan base interested. So uh, just so you know, I'm I'm gonna speak for Andy. Andy, Jody, and I. I think we're available. So Disney Plus, Bob Iger, uh, <laughs> we'll send in they our resumes. Never. Uh, they would never have the guts. But hey, but I don't know if I want that either because I've seen like the Stranger Things after show and notice they only did it on like season two. I don't know if people yeah. are watching it. I yeah. saw I watched Picard. I saw like the Will Wheaton hosted. Sh- like, look, they've done the after show format. I mean, AMC has pioneered that with Chris Harwick. Sure, that's easy stuff, but I, I, it's not stuff I, I really watch. If I'm invested at the end, like Game of Thrones or When Walking Dead was good, sure. Sometimes I'd like it would autoplay and I'd let it play. But look, I, I think it's the original stuff. It's figuring out how to age gate to allow it to go up just a level. I think because you're right. It's look, I don't have a problem with Disney having G because G is fine. Like for kids and babies, like that's what Disney is known for. I, I, I'm going to show my, my, you know, that's where you start. Um, and that's, it's nice to have that catalog because most parents, you, I don't know, you speak to me, Lewis, but yeah, you, but like most, I, I had a Disney, I have all the Disney DVDs. Like I always, that was the ones I always made sure I had in my collection, like before I even was a parent. And as I was a parent, like pulling those out first, like you want that Disney library, like it makes sense. And so Disney plus has now become the digital locker for all the Disney movies. And that's a nice thing to have. Uh, but that's, that's a phase, right? Then 
then the adults and everybody else want to be able to use the same app. And where they're losing is Netflix has a lot of kids program. They just signed a massive deal with Taika Waititi to do all the Roald Dahl works in sort of an original wow. new way, which was brilliant. The fact that they, the fact that they got Disney's Taika Waititi, like how did Disney let's, let's actually, let's talk. <laughs> how did Disney let that happen? You have Taika Waititi. Who's like, man, I'd love to do try and try. They couldn't like well, make up your own. Let's just do a new one. Whatever you want, Taika, here's money. What, 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 how did they let that slip through their fingers? How, one, how did they not just buy the Roll Doll Library and just own it, which would have been a nice new thing for them to have? But, like, why not say, Taika, no, no, no. What if you could do your own original idea? Hire whoever you want to help you write it. We'll animate it for you. Go do it. Why aren't they doing moves like that? They had him in the, in the roster, he was there. And it's like they let him go to Netflix to make a kids series with, which is, by the way, I'm excited for. Roll Doll is great. And I feel like some of those movies have been very hit or miss. This is a perfect opportunity to to adapt a lot of those. And so I, I saw that news and I was excited for Taika Waititi, excited for Netflix. How the hell did Disney miss that? You know what I mean? It's too much too soon. Um, they they acquired Fox. They have this Disney Plus thing, uh, Lucasfilm. I know that's been a few years as well. So I think it's too much too soon. Uh, they need to hire more people behind the scenes, more PR, more production, uh, more talent, more creatives, more of everything. And also, you're right. They need they need to triple production on Disney yeah. Plus to uh, get people more interested. Tron, bring Tron. I know a lot of people were on the fence about Tron Legacy. I loved it, but when you talk about Tron, your website will crash. It has a real loyal fan base. They will come in Tron on a weekly basis, live action. Let's do it. I think that's a great idea. Uh, they got all this property, like you said, and you know, I, I don't know, man. I, they just got to start hiring people. Well, Bob here. Iger is kind of it's kind of weird hearing Bob Iger is coming to fix this. Uh, I don't get it. <laughs> well, here, like, here, so here's an example. I'll pitch one. Right, uh, Alita, Battle Angel. Like, do it. Up. Why aren't they doing that? It's it's not what you'd expect them to do. And I know a lot of fans are like, no, 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 no. I want the movies. And I get it. But what was wrong with, why is that movie not family friendly enough for Disney, right? And it's it's a notch above. It's, it's like an anime feel. It allows for adults and older teens to feel like there's something on Disney Plus that they're excited about. And even beyond just Alita, that is the tone that they're missing. They need more stuff like that. That's just a, a little bit of a notch above and around what the Mandalorian's at, right? Because the Mandalorian doesn't feel like kids program, but you can watch it with the kid. I, my kids. I love, first of all, let me also just respect Mandalorian. I love the Mandalorian. I love it, love it, love it. And I especially love it because it was the gateway into Star Wars for my kids. I couldn't Same get them here. in through with the trilogies. I tried <laughs> everything in my power to get them to like, come on, come on, come on. They couldn't care less. And, Mandalorian, they loved it. And Baby Yoda, it wasn't just Baby Yoda. Dude, I had like a fun like week over the weekend. We were literally like, we made a box for it and they were, <laughs> they made it like the Mandal. They were like, the, my daughter's like, this is, the, I'm the, I'm the blacksmith. Uh, do you have any, uh, what's the, what's the metal? Uh, they, they were beating me to it. Uh, the, uh, the metal of the Mandalorian metal. Man Mandal uh, metal. Uh, metal. <laughs> it is something. In, uh, whatever. I'm even, I'm, I'm a fan and I'm already forgetting. But they, they were like, spat, like, I'll pay you in, uh, uh, Damascus or whatever it is. Uh, and we were like having this amazing time and I play like the theme song on loop. Dun, 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 dun. So my point oh. is like, I love like John Favreau, bless your heart. I I've had so much fun with my family, my kids, and it feels like grown up and it feels like something, you know, more edgy for my kids to watch. Mm -hmm. and I love that. I love that. It's got darker themes and it's more serious conversations. Disney, why aren't you doing more like that? Like we need, we need 10 shows fast tracked immediately that have that tone or what are you doing? This is just silly. You're going to, so anyway, I, I, I love it. They have, there's potential, you know, Jody said something interesting too. Let's talk about this because yeah. like Mandalorian, there's no way Mandalorian's ever as good as season one because they can't go as, as mature as even something like AMC could do. Like the Mandalorian as a Western, like needs to go now at this point, like, it's only it's safe as you get. Like at some point you got to get a little darker with the tone and it's always going to feel, uh, you know, not as hefty or as, as good because it can't have that more mature feel. Uh, I, I think that's a fair critical note. We'll see. I want to give it a shot. We'll see what happens. I think but it's going to get better. I think uh, TV uh, series, usually the first season is the worst and then they start finding their footing by three. They're peaked. And then by four, they start to taper off. That's the pattern I've seen with the uh, series. If you ask me, sometimes in three, they, they start to taper off like yeah. stranger things. Season three was kind of, I don't know for me, not really hitting it, but uh, they, it's all image. Uh, my mom, who's not a big star Wars fan, 
is glued to the television for Mandalorian. My son, similar story to yours. He he'll watch the the, the movies when I when I take them, but and he's interested. But then that's it. He doesn't want to see them again. Mandalorian. He's like his eyes are glued. We're all as a family sitting down uh, watching Disney Plus, and it, and I really miss it. <laughs> Yeah, and it's the problem. It's like I, I I'll watch Simpsons is really what when I only reason I turn it on, um, and then you know uh, I watch The Mandalorian and that's it. I tried like the Timmy failure. It wasn't. It was okay. It's, even the stuff we're trying was like meh. Uh, that Noel movie was rough. Did you watch Togo? Well, for my kids, I haven't seen Togo yet. That's William Dude, Defoe. that amazing. Yeah, I, look, I mean, it's not into dog sledding movies, bro. You don't have there to. There are be. so many of them on Disney Plus. No, you don't have to be. This is the. I'm this just saying, dog- no dogs there's eight below like there's a lot if you really go deep down there's a lot of dogs on sleds on disney plus more than you think you need uh but it was weird but anyway i'll, I'll take your word for it i want to get some comments i saw and i saw some super chats from john uh, fox uh disney released a south song of the south you cowards hey he's got a point why not release it it's history um but they won't uh they won't disney plus equals d plus entertainment ow ba boom boom Shh. Uh, don't no, because their back catalogs A plus. It's just we've seen it before. That's the anime that's- feel. Get a load of Andy. Lol. Yeah, well, I'm thinking of you because look, <laughs> gateway. Alita is like the gateway to get into it because it was an anime. They, I thought it was a pretty good adaptation. Uh, and I'm not. I've always I joke with Genji because I'm not a huge anime fan. And I, I and he always makes fun of me like, how can you just cut off all anime? It's like, I, I, <laughs> I don't. I just. I don't. I don't mean to. It just. It's not in my peripheral and. I, when I do get it, I, I usually I'm bored. But look, I, 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 I'm I not against trying it. But Alita was the one I liked. Um, uh, but anyway, I see a lot of other suggestions coming in. So start, you know, Super Chat's obviously pre- priority. And I'm trying to get some Facebook love to you guys because I know that they, uh, they're they watching a different platform. Mike Will- Tron, hell yes. There you go. Uh, we had a few. Uh, why can't they, uh, why can't the merge of a Hulu plus into D plus into one service, an adult option with mature content versus kids option. That is G rated. Disney needs to cut the BS and grow with the audience. They need a diversity. They have to have, they have too many IPs for Disney plus to be dubbed a failure. Amen. I, I don't understand why Hulu is weird to me. Now look, there's some stuff I'm sure they're going to, uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff on uh, FX, like the channel FX mm-hmm. uh, that I understand. is isn't really Disney's brand, right? I, I that's fair. American horror story. O- OJ shows like, I, I can see why Disney doesn't think that's on their brand, right? And they're hit shows, um, even Fargo to an extent. Like that's 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 the line, right? So now FX is really now Hulu, and they should just rebrand FX Hulu and make it just a network. Is what I would pitch them. Like mm. make it Hulu. Forget FX because it's confusing. Because Fox, we don't want Fox anyway. If you're really going to own Hulu, then just turn FX into Hulu. Make it be your adult brand like a that's just a like a like fox searchlight was a sub brand that you can make shows on it is what it is uh but then i would merge everything else into disney plus and just make hulu on demand is what you call it right and it's just a different thing so that's that's my where i'm confused like i think to to try and own both services is stupid it's just i think it's stupid i I, i'm in the i'm there it's a business thing and my bob Iger's a smart guy i'm sure there's a lot of reasons why you don't you don't want to connect those two, but I I don't get why you don't do what he just said and just and try to figure out a way to age gate it, let Disney grow a bit, and and just know that there's you know Disney Plus a, a Disney Plus or you know there can be a, a logo or something that sort of makes sure parents are know like this one's be careful this one's you know I don't think you need to put R rated content there still, but you could there's a lot more heavy PG thirteen stuff that could still fit in there I think and not be offensive. Do, do you disagree? No, absolutely. The only thing is like they'd have to start in, uh, you know, have some sort of code that you can't get in because I know a lot of people they actually give their five year olds uh, the remote control and uh, let them just uh, stream away at Di- on Disney Plus. I mean, they do um, every app on YouTube, everything. There's a lot of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I don't really use them that much, but uh, but um, the thing is that for under ten dollars to have a babysitter that's thirty one days out of the month, that's that's a pretty good deal. Maybe that's that's their space. Maybe that's they're happy at that uh, doing that. I don't know if we could uh, deem Disney Plus a failure yet. It's still extremely young, you know. Uh, Disney uh, ne- Netflix evolved a lot, weren't they? Oh, well, a DVD. Clear. I was just going to say, but to be clear, I'm not, no one's, we weren't even trying to dub it a failure. This is now what Bob Iger is tasked with to fix it. I, I didn't even like put that. I didn't, 
I wasn't going to do this episode until I saw, well, what's Bob Iger have to fix, right? And then it opens up the questions of, I think there's a lot he could fix if he's asking us as fans. Did Iger say fix? Did he yeah, use that word? I mean, that's, what, that's the... the uh, let's that so means it's broken. I didn't notice it was sure. broken until he sure. brought attention to it. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, his next priority is to stream. So here's how they're phrasing it. Let's so let's let's do it. You're right. Let's let's call it for what it is. Because Collider used the word fix. Okay. Bob Iger's next priority: streamline Disney Plus development. His new role is getting everything right creatively. Notice they didn't use the word fix. Okay. Getting everything right, but come on, let's read between the lines. It's obviously <laughs> it's not it's not working as much as they hoped, and people are are sort of realizing like, why am I subscribed to this? What what is it? And, and I think that's that was my next issue, which we've tapped upon. Um, but it's like, you know, they need to make way more shows like, they and here's a danger. Here's a real big danger. That image right there, right? Uh, Mandalorian's great, but season two and an entire Disney plus is living off Mandalorian. Uh, and that's all people talk about when they talk about Disney plus, they need to keep the medium between baby Yoda and the actual, uh, how would I say show like don't over baby Yoda season two. Cause that. That is a big danger because they're seeing all that um, positive feedback from Baby Yoda and stuff. But I feel like the first season was a good balance between uh, Mando and Baby Yoda. And when I first saw Baby Yoda or the child in the first uh, episode, the pilot, I was like, man, I, this is good, but I hope they don't overdo it. Right. And they did it. In my opinion, they didn't do it. So if they overdo Baby Yoda, make it the, the child sh show and Mando second that could be a problem and ruin their, their uh, best property or their best uh, series. So they got to be real careful because everyone's just baby Yoda, baby Yoda, baby Yoda, but he's not really the main character in the Mandalorian. Interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, what I was going to say was uh, the, 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 um, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, uh, the, uh, I was, um, was trying to open up this more information on this because yeah, look, the, the fact that they're putting like, you know, like, so they did that show high fidelity, which then went to YouTube or, or to a uh, Hulu. And then they have this now love Simon, which they've changed to love, whatever the new character is. Um, but so those are like sort of things that that uh, high fidelity love Simon TV series now were moved because of adult themes. The executives weren't comfortable showing on the family friendly Disney plus like this is the problem. And then now we have the Lizzie McGuire show that just came back. Uh, and you know, they fired the creator, which is awful. Uh, and mm. now Hillary, Hillary Duff's like all pleading, like, please let us move to Hulu so we can ensure, you know, so uh, th 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 it's becoming a problem. It's becoming a problem. And then beyond just that, why is Obi-Wan, you know, paused? <laughs> that that's a problem that Bob Iger needs to address. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, it's just interesting. I'm trying to read this is, uh, Disney's guidepost for the service as a whole is to create family friendly PG 13 environment that reflects the company's core values, but has a different standards for each of its brand titles In marketing materials. Disney has described the Marvel hub or many of the licensed are PG 13 as epic storytelling with a human spirit and national geographic is entertainment with purpose. Disney and Pixar titles, however, have younger skewing programming and are described as special entertainment with heart and Simpsons, which streamed in full Disney plus is not categorized under any of these brands uh, between TV and 14 rating over its suggestive language violence. And I'll be a cartoonish six of sexual situations. So that, this is what I want to point out. I, I don't even think Disney even knows what they have because the Simpsons has some definitely not family friendly content on it. Like definitely not. They, especially in the earlier seasons, there are shots of triple X porno. Get like they in the early years, eighties, nineties, uh, mostly nineties. It was eighty nine when it started in the, in the uh, December. There's a lot of stuff in there that I don't. I think Disney would have scrubbed had they tried to, but then they would have realized there was a backlash, and I think they're just ignoring it. But mm -hmm. someone could do a pretty massive supercut. <laughs> someone wants to help me do it of pulling all of the unfamily friendly things uh to go there what was your note are you trying to send some uh, well yes actually deadlines reporting that uh you know production for falcon and the winter soldier has been halted oh, yeah. due to budweiser the bud, light. <laughs> the, the bud light thing hey actually uh real bit uh real quick before we get into that topic or whatever uh the bud light uh thing is the bud uh vir whatever we're calling it is actually i'm starting to watch other youtubers are using the term so they're watching us that's great oh, bud, light, yeah. <laughs> bud light virus so that's catching bud, on thanks yeah, everyone bud, bud light because but come on come on Co corona is better than uh bud light don't you think i don't know i don't i don't really care for either i don't like either either but I, I would rather uh james hopkins thank you so much for the support uh he needs to fix the movie half 
he needs to fix the move movie. Half of the Star Wars franchise give us a new episode seven, eight, nine, and do it right this time. <laughs> Look, I, I don't disagree with you. I'm frustrated with those. I don't hate Force Awakens. I've come around on parts parts of Last Jedi, but I really dislike Rise of Skywalker it, <laughs> for now. It, you, and it makes me hate the other two more because you're like, well, what, what, was, what was the point? Why, why did you? What? What? You need to put that entire Star Wars to rest for a bit. Just let it rest. Yeah, uh, let it die. I don't want yeah. them to redo it. Just move on. They can't redo it. A new movie, new movie, new future. Let's do it. This is history repeating itself, Andy. You were there in 99, uh, 2002, and 2005. The prequels were deemed the end of Star Wars. The generation that watched it, the young kids love those movies. Our generation, not so much, the OG. And now we're seeing the exact same thing. In 20 years, the five-year-olds are going to be coming back and going, man, I love the Disney Star Wars era. I think that's going to happen, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just wait and see in 20 years. We'll be back here on popcorn planet talking about it. But I mean, so here's another point. I'd rather see call of the wild. Uh, but like that's the point that that's a, that is a Disney plus movie, I guess. Yeah. Right. That's, that's still more, con that's still more in the direction of what I'm trying to get at, even though I don't, I didn't see it. I've heard mixed, but my point is like, we need more of that type of stuff. And they're, they are not going to green light anything like that again. That was just in the already shot phase at Fox that they kept. Um, and so uh, this is where HBO gets Disney at. Mature content is important as, as it is stuff for kids. Disney needs to realize adults are buying the, uh, the not the children. It's true. And look, what they got to realize is like HBO uh, Warner, it's HBO Warner now. They're going to have all of the Hanna-Barbera. They have Sesame Street. Uh, HBO Max is going to have a lot of kids programming. It's going to be legit. So it's like as a parent who wants to buy one service if they're broke, you know, why would I buy the one that only has kids programming when I can get one that has kids programming and programming for me you know what i mean like it doesn't from a business standpoint they got to realize at some point they're they're only advertising to half of the world you know less than half you know what i mean like there's a lot of audience they can't tap into at disney and that netflix has a uh, nickelodeon right this is netflix uh, no i think that well there now that might become viacom might step in and uh become cbs all access might turn into a new one i'm hearing which would be smarter because cbs all access is i i have it I, someone has someone helped get me in and I have it. And I, I've, I've even stopped watching Picard. I'm, I'm not as into it as I was. Really? So, so I'm just, I'm like sort of waiting for, I, it's not a show I like week to week. I want it. To, I want to binge it. I want it to be done and, and get through it. Um, so I'm like letting it gather and then I'll catch up. Uh, but no, CBS all access. It's like, I, I watch it to catch an old survivor once in a while and I watch <laughs> Picard and that's it. Uh, but if they make Matt merged with Viacom, like actually, which is, you know, and got Comedy Central in there, like the roast and South Park and Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon and added all and MTV and added all that stuff together. And, and then the Paramount, you know, a library and stuff, then suddenly it's a, it's something right. Uh, Transformers would be in there, I guess. But there's enough to pull uh, Ninja Turtles. There's enough to like make a I think a destination then suddenly for if they decided to, co you know, combine it all. Could satellite TV strike back? They, if I was handling like a direct TV, I'd be brainstorming right now before my business goes under. Well, no, uh, it, it, this we knew this was coming. I remember even yeah. when I worked at when I worked at the last place that shall not be named. It's all about <laughs> creating IP, and, and that was like, yeah, it, that's how you lived in this ecosystem. Like, if you didn't own it, you're dead in the water. Like the right. studios that own Disney, etc. Disney buying Star Wars and Marvel at when they did. Pen, for for pennies, which doesn't seem like, but it was buying that kind of valuable IP. Pff, that's what it's all about right now. But then, but here's what sucks about our new our new environment: they've all bought this IP that they're just keep replanting, and they aren't making new IP, and because yeah. no one to risk it, and that that is the death of creativity and why we're we're all turning to mush because it's like there's no I, original. It's so rare to see an original show that everyone's like, damn, when's the last original thing you watched? Something original, not based off a comic book or a movie or a show that was strictly for a movie or TV. They're like, damn, that was good. Me, the hunt. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, look, I got, I got to say what I have noticed in the industry, man, is like there's scarcity and everything. There's like I, I mentioned before, uh, PR, uh, public relations and studios they got the same person handling three studios uh they got the right now as far as like the press is concerned um there's less competition because if you own like nbc right you're not going to be covering a uh disney plus because it's it's a uh, it's a competitor so other they they need they're looking for outlets to go and cover 
uh, Disney Plus stuff because now all of a sudden Univision or whatever we're not competing with those people anymore. As opposed to films, you know, every it's everyone against each other. Uh, there's more competition against the the corporate owned sites and and outlets. You know what I mean? So so the thing is, uh, th th everything is scarce right now. People need uh, if you're if you think you're creative, if you, you like creating. Uh, plots or, or film or if you you're a director now's the time to uh, attack and submit your application because or oh, do it yourself. I, mean, I think we I, i've been inspired recently i'm just like i'm so sick of just regurgitating on the news i got my my creative itch is just like i need to write something again just and just go do it because you have we have the dude you can make a movie on your phone they've done it like people, there's no excuse. If you're a creative person, you want to make content, go make content. And if it's at remotely successful in any way possible, there's a lot of people who need the content right now. So if you can put together a decent enough professional thing that, that has a clicky, you know, and a good story and people are like, oh, that's a, a cool log line. You can get it out there in the world. And I'm not going to yeah, share. Right. You know, like they, they made a movie called Hanukkah, right? Let's, uh, yeah. Anyway. Brilliant idea, right? It doesn't even matter if the movie's good, which I, I'm i sure it's good. Guys, but no, I'm, it's I, good. It's good. But, but the point is like, what a brilliant idea. No one's made a horror movie about Hanukkah and you guys can go check it out. You can go pre-order it. Where can I go look up Hanukkah by uh, Evan McGar? But my, I'm brilliant. It's brilliant of him because, you know, I, I'm assuming the movie's good. But my point is there's sometimes it's, it's a good idea. It doesn't even matter, right? Uh, he made a good in addition to it. But that's the point of like, you just need a really good idea. And, and and you can you can get it out there, and then you get distribution. You can get releasing. Uh, you can sell it yourself. Uh, there are methods, and then you don't have to go that route. People want original content. I think there's going to start being an underground of like, oh, did you hear about that indie thing that it's not adapted from anything? It's like a <laughs> real thing. I don't know that that kind of stuff excites me. Yeah, I think, uh, and also shout out to uh, Hanukkah. It's Sid Haig's final film before he, yeah. he passed away. Uh, very exciting and original, like you said. So people need to go out there and support original content instead of going on Twitter, uh, bashing the studios for making remakes and sequels. Where well, you guys aren't watching the original content, man. Go out and support the original content. Like right here, David Taylor just gave in the super oh, yeah. chat. That's thank what you, you do. Boom. That's what you do. Artists. Support. You want, and, and thank you, Dave. For real. And thank you, Dave. Uh, John, John always gives to yell at me about anime. I love you, John. And James, uh, thank you guys for for helping uh, support the channel today. Uh, I, I watched Hugging the Cactus. It was fantastic, guys. It's so it, it was a. It, I have such a good one this weekend. If you are a Survivor fan, you will want to watch a Sunday because I have Survivor, Millionaire, convicted tax fraud, uh, sexual assaulter, Richard Hatch, who is going to set the record straight on all of it, and it's it's intense. Dude got railroaded. Dude got railroad and he drops uh, some fascinating, really good stuff that you guys, even if you aren't like most people remember that first season survivor and the naked guy, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, what happened to him? All the stuff he's been through, it, we go through all of it. And, and it's a, it's a really, 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 I'm, I'm still cutting together, but I was just glued. I uh, will spoken really thing. So thank you. And if you haven't watched my last, we can go over hugging a cactus. So thank you, Dave, for let me plug that. Um, and you don't have to be a fan of survivor. Uh, these stories, like I don't watch it, but these stories are fascinating. Yeah. The, so uh, he, he explains, he explains all of it. Even if you don't watch the show, I made, you know, I made sure of that, but yeah, yeah. for those that do or did, oh, it's, it's even better. He's like, yeah, Oh my God, what? That was that uh, he makes him out. He makes some serious. He drops some serious, like what? Uh, it, it's, it's, Stay tuned. Can't tease it enough. Uh, but anyway, I got to go run to the hunt. So uh, thank you for the support, really? there, Dave and James and John. You guys are the best. Uh, I, John, I'll fig tell me what anime you want me to watch. I'll fit. <laughs> I'll do a review with you. You get one. Give me the one anime. Any of it. I, I haven't seen any. Of it. I, I'm so an idiot with anime. Pick one piece of anime. You donate too much. And I'm. Let's do it. One piece of anime, and then I'll do a stream one of these mornings. We'll review it together as part of the show. I'll call you in. We'll break it down. Tell me what to watch, where to watch it, and we'll do it. He's saying, no, come on. No, do it. John, come on. Figure out what, give it to me. I'm going to go with an open mind. I'm going to try it. Uh, anybody else wants to pitch, I'm going to try. How do you get me the one thing that can sell me on it? Uh, make the suggestions. Let's go. Cause he's in there all the time telling me to watch it. Uh, the rest of you, thank you so much for watching. Lewis. Let's watch Spirits oh, Away. I'm hearing, hearing good stuff about that one. Spirits Away anime. What Spirits Away. Oh, I've seen, well, I've seen I've seen some of the uh, yeah I've seen Studio Ghib Ghibli Ghibli. I have uh -huh. seen a couple of those. I did see Spirited Away, so I guess I have seen a couple. Um, but yeah, like Dra Naruto, One Punch, Dragon Ball Z. I, I haven't seen any of that. Attack of Titan. Don't that, Cowboy Bebop. Dragon Ball Z. Everyone I, loves it. I shouldn't admit it, but I still haven't even seen Akira or uh, Ghost in the Shell. Most people say those are the two I should start with. What uh, about Voltron? Does that count? 
I've seen some Voltron. I have Does that seen- count though? Is that it's- anime it's- enough? Yeah, or like Power Rangers, isn't aren't they kind of borrowing from anime too? In a bit that and Godzilla. They're borrowing, yeah. <laughs> they're borrowing. They're not. I know they're not, but they're they're borrowing. Uh, but there you go. So yeah, pitch me or John. You, you've been the the, <laughs> the leading of that to tell me. And the rest of you, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, I'm going to be with Jody over in Jody's Corner on Yee Gang, uh, 5:30 Eastern. I just got confirmed. Right back when I get from the movie, go check out Jody's Corner. I'll be there and check out Nerd Report uh, to watch him. And if you aren't already, please go to Fandom Wire. There should be a logo up there. Fandom Wire. Uh, there's the W to remind you. Fandom Wire News on Facebook. The link is down below on uh, YouTube or you're watching on Facebook. But smash the like button there and on this video before you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your comments down after the videos. If, you've already, if you're watching this late, uh, you can still donate, help the stream, all those links are down below. And you can still comment to suggest what you would like to see and how to fix. We might come back and check some of these later. So again, have an awesome day, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow uh, around 2 o'clock. See you, everybody. See Bye, ya, everyone.